Good afternoon, my name is Dr. Dave Highmarsh and here in the third video for statistics we're going to look at testing and more importantly when a positive test doesn't mean a positive test. We're going to look at a couple of key things in this video, false and true uh, test values, positive and negatives and which will then feed directly into sensitivity and specificity. We're going to then use those examples to apply to a couple of examples, uh, main one being COVID testing and certainly the home testing, which is going to be pushed out uh, wide. I know a lot of NHS users, so my wife's an A&E doctor and she has to do home testing multiple times a week um, and you can see it trialling more and more in the news. Obviously, there's been mixed reports about them and so we're going to look at the information behind it and why the reports may be mixed. So with any test the result that you get back uh, can be one of four things. It can either be a true positive, true negative, a false positive and a false negative. Now I like to, uh, when presented with that information, I like to flick it on its head. So the second value, the positive or negative, is what the actual test result is. And then the true or false is whether we believe it or not. So for example, a true positive is a positive result that is true. Likewise, negative uh, a true negative is a negative result that's true and you get the rest of the ideas. I find that it's an easy way to comprehend it, especially when you're trying to explain this to someone else. Okay. So before we go any further, there need to be certain key assumptions. And for any disease that's presented, there needs to be a way to validate the, the disease. And uh, it's with this testing regime or that we actually we do the comparisons with. So whenever looking for this information, just try and ask yourself, well, what has it been compared to? This comparison test is often the gold standard and it's deemed as the definitive way to test, but there's often issues around it, i.e. the equipment required, the personnel required, that to roll it out to a large scale testing is just impractical. So the proposed test uh, is a simpler way to do it um, and it's normally either part of a screening program or certainly being considered for that way. Okay, so for example, uh, to measure the effectiveness of D dimers to pick up a DVT, a study would have been performed. Okay, the in in the group that was studied, all of the participants would have had a gold standard. So for this example, an ultrasound scan of their calves um, to see if there was a clot there, and likewise a D dimer. The D-dimer and then the ultrasound scan results were then compared and we'll look at that comparison. So we're going to have a look at this example to deal with breast cancer and breast screening. Okay, Similarly one we would have say in this group done uh, a CT scan to make sure if there is any evidence of any breast cancer. So if we take a thousand women, okay, 10 of whom have confirmed breast cancer, 990 do not have breast cancer. Now, as soon as we've differentiated, that is, they have gone on the presumption they've gone through the gold standard testing regime. Okay, so that's what that first line means. The second line is the actual proposed test that we're doing. So in this one, it'll be mammogram breast screening service. Okay, and you can see that uh, the results have started to change. Okay, so in this one, nine have uh, breast cancer and tested positive, i.e. it's been picked up on mammogram, and one hasn't. And likewise, uh, 99, the, so the green positive that's down here, okay, 99 uh, do not have breast cancer but have tested positive, and likewise, uh, we've got 891 who do not have breast cancer and, do, and have tested negative. Okay, so moving on. So from the data we got, we can work out the following uh, following things. So sensitivity, specificity, positive predicted value, and negative predicted value. And the best way to do this is to uh, get a table going, and they will always be set out this way. So along the top will be your gold standard testing that has been done. So it will be disease present and disease absent, whatever that testing regime may be. And down the side, it'll be test positive and then test negative. And filling in, it'll be true positive, false positive, okay, because you've got the test result, which is positive. We're saying the disease is present, so it's correct. And then in this one, it is uh, disease is absent, it's false, okay. Likewise, we've got uh, tested negative. So we've got false negative, so it's the disease is present and it hasn't picked it up. And likewise, the disease is absent and the test has said that it's absent, so it's a true negative. So going back to our uh, previous slide, I've already filled in all of the numbers into this one. 
and we can start to work out the sensitivity and specificity. So your sensitivity is effectively how good the test is at predicting people with the, have got the condition uh, is good at picking it up. Okay, so from this one we are just looking at this column here for disease present. And so we'll take the true positive value and then uh, divide that by the total number that's in uh, this column here. And likewise with specificity, it's how good a test is at ruling out people without the condition. So we'll take the true negative, okay, and divide it by the total of this column here. And then we've got positive predictive value, so how accurate is the positive result? And again, we're just taking the true positive value here um, and dividing that by the total of this column. And likewise, the true negative result, okay, and likewise, we're dividing the true negative value by the total of this column here. And that will give us this four values. Now, a bit of a curveball. Yeah. So, going back to this screening, breast screening program, we've worked it out that we've got. So, sensitivity is 9 divided by the total in this column, which is 10, which equals 0.9% or 90%. And specificity is 891 so the true and negative value divided by the total of this column so 891 divided by oh add 99 which again equals 90 percent and likewise we've done the same here for the positive predictive value and negative predictive value we're going to just run through a couple of these examples so final curveball which i got actually in my akt uh what is the prevalence? So prevalence is of the disease, the total, total rate of the disease at this particular snapshot. So it's the number of cases in this population divided by the total population. Okay, so all we care about is the total of the disease present. So that's 10. Okay, and the total population, which is 1,000. So it's 10 divided by uh, 1,000 times by 100 to get a percentage rate, which equals 0 0.01 times 100, which is 1%. So moving on to the lateral flow testing. Now these are the tests that have been proposed to be pushed out. Now certainly those who work in uh, hospitals would be asked to be doing these testings uh, so many times a week. Um, and the data that I've used is taken from the Liverpool pilot study and you can easily access this and this has been put on uh, to government websites and I'll put a link in the description below so you can have a look at the full article itself. So going back, what's the gold standard framework? So the gold standard is uh, PCR. So as you can well imagine, PCR issues is that it requires significant not only laboratory support, but also personnel to actually administer the tests. Okay, so it's expensive and time consuming, it requires training to do it, um, and etc. etc. The proposed has been obviously the lateral flow testing. It's a quick result, it can be self-administered and self-taught. Um, I've had to do a couple of these myself, um, but there is obviously a greater risk of error. Okay, not only from uh, having to administer it yourself, but actually whether the was uh, the testing capability is good. So the results uh, here are taken. So as you can see here, they've not only provided, they've got the gold standard at the top with negative and positive, um, and they've also done avoided samples, okay? And likewise, they've got negative and positive of the actual uh, lateral flow testings uh, as the proposed new test, okay? And you can see they've got some avoided samples here. They've presented the sensitive sensitivity and specificity and given us a value of uh, 48 and 99 percent so just to double check their maths just to give us something to do and you can see here if you ignore the void samples of here sensitivity is uh, it again so 22 divided by uh, 22 plus 23 22 over 45 and gives us 48 and likewise we can do the same for specificity okay so what does that mean for us? Okay, and what can we start to tell patients? So I would look at this is that the actual result is not very good at giving us a negative uh, value, i.e. if you get a negative result from the lateral flow testing I wouldn't read too much into it because it is missing out a significant proportion of the people who are doing it, i.e. approximately half from looking at these values here. Okay. On the reverse, if you come back with a positive result, there is a high probability 
that you've got COVID in this case. Okay. And that actually then falls into the arguments of what has been done. So the whole purpose of the lateral flow testing is that you use it in conjunction with other bits such as PPE, um, you know, your two metre distancing, hands face space, all that good stuff, regardless of your test result. OK, so we're not negating that. What we're trying to do is capture those who are the asymptomatic carriers so that if they come back with a positive test, we can isolate them early despite them not showing any symptoms. OK, so it's the issue that I think what was reported in the media widely is that a lot of these people were getting negative results and then were going out thinking they were free to move about. And as you can see from the results, that caused chaos in terms of having multiple people subsequently becoming infected. OK, so a quick video. In conclusion, we've talked about false and true negatives um, and also uh, false and true positives talked about sensitivity and specificity and talked about positive and negative predictive value. This crops up on the AKT time and time again, so please, please, please be confident uh, in being able to complete that table um, and also being able to just calculate those. We've applied it to two real-world examples, breast screening and uh, very topical one, COVID testing, just to sort of try and highlight and uh, really bring it to the fore. Please like and share and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.